let's derive the known law that the linear velocity is equal to the radius multiplied by the angular velocity. So here's a situation of something going in a circle. Circle has radius r, and when it traces out this much angular distance, call it theta, well, it's covering this distance s, linear distance s. Well, we know that s, the arc length, is equal to r theta. And if we take the derivative of both sides, we get ds dt is equal to d dt of r theta. Well, the radius of this circle does not change with time. So it can pop out of the derivative. And on this side, we still have the ds dt. And now, by definition, d dt of this distance s, well, that's the linear velocity r, the rate of change of the angle. By definition, that's the angular velocity. So now we have it. Linear velocity equals radius times the angular velocity. Let's do an example with this formula. So we have here, for example, it might be your bicycle. We have the uh, two sprockets. One is twice as large as the other. Well, they're connected by a chain. So if I call this R1 and this R2, I know that V1 here and V2 here, they're equal to each other. So V1 equals V2. And I know that because the chain is linear and the chain's not expanding or contracting. So whatever rate of change that the chain comes off of this sprocket, it has to be the same on this one. So let's plug in uh, r1 omega 1 equals r2 omega 2. And we know that this is, we gave it a factor of 2. And this guy a factor of 4. So I can now see that the angular speed of the big sprocket is one half the angular speed of the small sprocket. So for example, if you're pedaling here, for each turn you do, you get two turns there. Good way to go faster.